these are uh, photos that uh, Sugi and I took on a uh, trip to Ohara, which is a uh, it's a uh, an outlying ancient uh, suburb of Kyoto, and uh, we uh, we got there by taking a uh, a privately owned bus uh, in the uh, downtown core uh, next to uh, the uh, the very uh, sort of Star Wars like structure of uh, of Kyoto Station. Kyoto Train Station is a uh, a, a rather complicated. Uh, bus terminal, uh, which includes both uh, municipally owned and privately owned buses. And once you s figure out where you're supposed to go, which, which takes a bit of uh, pointing and guesswork and um, uh, rather uh, fervid communication with the, uh, with the uh, uh, bus ticket people, uh, you get on a, uh, a bus and uh, it takes you out of the city, up through the hills to a, uh, a terminal just at the foot of the, uh, well, it's actually part way up a series of, of mountains, and uh, one goes farther up the mountain as one uh, uh, gets to uh, these various temples that that are in that uh, particular location. Now, um, the first thing that uh, I noticed when we arrived in Ohara was uh, the signage. There were a lot of uh, signs everywhere. There were, uh, Sugi could read a fair number of them because the Japanese use their own alphabet but also use a great number of uh, Chinese characters. Um, the Korean uh, style of writing used to also incorporate a lot of uh, Chinese characters as well, but thank God uh, the Koreans have uh, left behind that system of writing and uh, just uh, use Hangul. Hangul is a wonderful alphabet. It's very easy to understand. It's very phonetically accurate. And uh, it has its own great beauty. Um, however, the, uh, the Japanese use a combination of Chinese characters and Japanese characters, which makes for an enormously complicated reading experience. However, aesthetically, it is quite beautiful. And you can see why there are uh, people who uh, genuinely enjoy uh, the Japanese, or rather the Chinese characters. They, uh, they really have um, a great kind of flowing uh, sort of quality, almost like Arabic script. And uh, you see these experimentations with, uh, with calligraphy style, even on the signs, the way uh, uh, paint is uh, applied to an old piece of metal that gets rusted, or the way uh, characters are burned into a piece of wood. Each sign, each style of calligraphy is quite different. And uh, one thing that one also notices in these, uh, these old uh, Japanese areas around temples is uh, the great uh, ability that the Japanese have to, um, to turn moss into uh, something quite beautiful. Just about everywhere you see moss trimmed, moss sort of cultivated on stones, moss added to places. And um, uh, uh, the, uh, the first place that we wanted to go to was a nun's temple. It was an ancient temple that goes back centuries. And uh, after the culture shock of uh, uh, paying the entrance fee to the, uh, the temple, we uh, went up a, uh, a beautiful uh, stone staircase, which in itself was, was almost worth the price of admission. And uh, as you go up the staircase, you see trees that just are growing right in the middle of the staircase, or you see these subsidiary buildings with, with gates that themselves have roofs that are just covered with, with moss. And uh, so we uh, spent quite a bit of time just walking up this, uh, this stone staircase and um, uh, you can see for example this one particular roof that uh, is so covered with with moss that it just looks like uh, it, it looks like uh, a building made of, of greenery uh, uh, not even a building made of, of wood and uh, then in the temple itself there was there was more moss uh, although it was very uh, it was much more uh, strictly cultivated, I guess you could say. Uh, it sort of, whereas the moss outside was kind of hippie moss, the moss inside the temple was more of a crew cut. Um, 
And uh, the temple buildings themselves were rather uh, small. They were rather new, too. There was a disastrous fire a decade or two ago, which destroyed the original temple that went back centuries. And uh, the temple grounds, as one finds at nuns' temples, uh, were rather small. And uh, we walked around that area for a while. Uh, it started to rain lightly, and uh, then we uh, went downstairs, down the, uh, the stone steps again, and uh, up a uh, road into a forest. And uh, in the forest, we saw these uh, spectacular trees. They just rose up hundreds of feet, it seemed, these immense ancient trees also covered with moss, and uh, another uh, set of stone steps that led up almost at one got this very sort of um, aesthetically um, mysterious kind of feeling looking at these these stairs leading into the forest uh, the forest seemed to just stretch back endlessly and um, so uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we spent some time just at the entrance to this forest we didn't walk very far into it it was just getting too wet and uh, we went back and had a nice lunch of uh, uh, udon noodles at a, uh, at a beautiful restaurant. And then uh, we ended up uh, walking around the Ohara area into the residential part of Ohara, past uh, farms and uh, homes belonging to artisans and so forth. 